Joining us as always is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And breaking news for Star Wars, they've just discovered the hiding location where Luke Skywalker's been hanging out. It's in any movie theater playing Gem and the Holograms, where you can be absolutely alone. <laughs> I can feel your anger. <laughs> uh, what do you got? Well, I mean, okay, but, but seriously, though, I mean, in, in the words of the great Mahatma Gandhi, bullshit! <laughs> A lot of us have been assuming up until this point that at some point, Luke has gone into exile. I'm starting to think Luke was sent into exile. Yeah, it's a bad poster. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bad How poster. Dare you, sir. I, well, here's the thing, though. Look, because... You know, some people are like, Kevin, you're just a Star Wars fan, so you'll say anything Star Wars is good. No, I do not. No, he does not. No, I, I, keep, I try to keep my head on straight. You could have a shoe that is nothing but a cardboard bottom with two rubber bands to hook over your foot. But if there's a picture of R2-D2 on it, then there are some people that will go, but it's Star Wars. That means it's the best shoe ever. I absolutely, this, this notion, when people are saying, Simon Pegg continues to disrespect the fans, with all the love of my heart, shut up. Just <laughs> shut up. He has never disrespected the fans. Look, I am a diehard, to the core, I bleed blue and white Toronto Maple Leaf fan, okay? Guess what? They suck. Yo, can't be a Toronto Maple Leaf suck. What can I do? I say, well, I love them anyway. They suck, but I love them anyway. I worship at the altar of George Lucas. That nobody has done more for the film industry in the last 50 years than what he has done for the film industry. My favorite hockey player in the world, my your favorite baseball player, or your favorite basketball player, what, whatever, can be your favorite in the world, and if they go out and suck one game, you say they sucked that game. That is not disrespecting them. That's you looking at the art or the sport or whatever and saying, hey, that outing was not so good. But, you know, for those of you who don't know the story, Lawson claims they asked him to come back, and he basically stuck his stuck-up nose up in the air and said, no, I'm too good for this now. And, and, and I'm not, I'm hyper using a little bit of hyperbole, but that is basically the gist. He was not just saying, ah, oh, you know, I'm just a little busy. No, no, he was actually pretty dismissive of it. I don't need Star Wars. Yeah, it was pretty much that, you lazy piece of shit. Nobody would care who the hell you were if it wasn't for Star Wars. Kids, turn, the, turn it on so, me. Anyway, oh, wait, so anyway, so it just pisses me off a little <laughs> bit. I worship at the altar of George Lucas, but that doesn't mean I put a bag over my head, stick my head in the sand, and just go, anything he does is beautiful. No. I look at the prequels, you may look at them and like them, I look at them and I think they're horrible. This notion of this whiny band of crybabies who are going out and trying to get Simon Pegg. Now granted, look, let me call Space Spade here. I don't like the prequels. Simon Pegg doesn't like the prequels, so it'll look on the surface like we're on the same thing, but I don't care if Simon Pegg was going out and trash talking Man of Steel. I'd be saying the same thing. Get over it. He adores this franchise and his love for it is part of the reason he's so angry at the prequels. I'm going to finish what you started. What? what? What was it that Vader started that he was unable to complete? I don't want him as a good guy. Not because I'm typecasting him. Not because I'm trying to put him into a corner or peg him into a little hole. Not, not at all. He's just so good as a creepy bad guy. <laughs> the guy in the whatever. So ridiculous. <laughs> Dr. Mindbender. Yes. It would just seem to me very peculiar then for Lucasfilm and very misguided for Lucasfilm to go, look, look, everybody, a return to classical filmmaking, to, physical sets, to let's, let's CGI resurrect an old actor and have a completely be fair, CGI though, character. To be fair, though, the person swinging that flag has been J.J. Abrams. Yes, it has. Now, Gareth Edwards has might have just said, I'm not going to pick that flag up. But the best argument is the one you mentioned to me yesterday and then just mentioned again. You're recasting Harrison Ford. If you're recasting Harrison Ford, if there's anybody in the Star Wars universe that's going to be considered untouchable as far as recasting, it's Harrison Ford. You're recasting Harrison Ford. Recast Tarkin. Just recast him. I still think it's a moronic, like nothing short of the height of stupidity and moronic. That you would play, oh, here's the first episode of scene two. Now we're going to wait three months to show you the next episode. It's just stupid marketing plan. Absolutely ludicrous. Get your heads on straight and don't do you this. 
this stupid shit next to you. Wait, I gotta just disagree. Do I gotta disagree with you because like because I think that it's a matter of well, this is a formula that worked for us during season one. They did the same thing for season one, and it worked. No, 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 it did not work for me. But it but did it, not but, work oh, for me. But, oh, but you watched the season, and overall, I'm telling you, most people, even though they they gave them that taste, and like I'll go back and watch it again once this thing is on, and because it wasn't that. It's a li- it's a bit of a longer break this time, which I'm not thrilled with. Uh, Mark, how do you feel? Oh, you were just it? saying, you were just saying no yeah. more than five minutes ago. Oh man, it's okay to take a couple week break, but break after the first episode, three months. I know, I know. I won't blame them if they don't show us any Luke. I won't blame them. I'll understand. We're talking about not doubling, not tripling, not quadrupling. Like from Fandango's point of view, eight times. These numbers are fantastic. Like, these are fairy tale numbers. This is astounding. So I said this on yesterday's show. I'm going to say it again. My previous prediction <clears throat> for Star Wars opening weekend, understanding that the existing December record, is, I think, is 78 million. 86. Is it eight? Oh, yeah, yeah it was 78. Uh, right. Got beat yeah. to 86 million. Uh, I think the highest I went before was 170. That's the highest I was willing to go before. Um, I am now going to, and then yesterday's show, I said it. I'll say it again. I'm going to go 250. But there are, look, there are a lot of us Star Wars fans, God bless us, there are a lot of Star Wars fans who go, this looks like kind of a, a crappy beat down bo- half drank bottle of water, put a Star Wars label on it. This is the greatest yeah. bottle of water in the history of bottled water. Are you oh talking to me, sir? <laughs> are you <laughs> talking to me, sir? No, because I know you're not that no, guy. I'm not. But I, but I, But honestly, seriously, you take the Star Wars label off this thing, you put any other post together uh, for any that's... other movie with four, that, get, get, get this right. Aside from the big line of stormtroopers, not counting the big line of stormtroopers on the bottom, there are 14 characters in this mm-hmm. poster. And all of them tell Four- a story, though. No, they but don't they, tell yes, a story. They do. They're all standing there. But they all... No, they're not telling any more of a story than that, any those movie X-wings, poster of Those X-wings scene. are standing there? No, they're in battle. The, the Millennium I, Falcon is flying, but no, he's got I, a lightsaber. I think, there's a, I think with people's oh, reaction to this poster... I think there's a little bit of it's Star Wars, therefore it's awesome. I don't and, disagree with you that that's I, part of it. I, I, I'm sorry. I just, I, you know, I want to love everything Star Wars. Yeah. I do. The trailer's awesome. The movie's going to be great. But I got to call it like I see it. I, I can't. I look at this poster and I think if it were any other movie franchise, I would not let that move. I would not let this poster pass. Yeah. So last night, I, I had not yet seen this footage, right? And last night I get home and I see a avalanche of tweets from people saying, John, have you seen this bitch? And like, like, like all this stuff about how angry, like, like people were, the tweets I was reading and the posts I was reading on Facebook and everywhere from the Star Wars fan community was like this horrible thing had just happened. Uh, Like this huge attack on the Star Wars fan community and my blood started rising. In typical John Campy fashion, before I even saw the video, my blood started rising. Right, right. I was telling Christian this this morning. I kid you not, this is the God's honest truth, and this is embarrassing. Before I even found the link to click over to watch that video, I was already planning my address on Movie Talk the next morning. I was even thinking about getting a hold of Dennis. Say, Dennis, crack out the teleprompter because I'm going to write this thing out articulately. I'm going to slam the sons of mm, for coming after the Star Wars fans because I'll tell you what. I'm, everybody knows I'm a big sports fan. And so when I'm driving in my car, I listen to sports radio. I don't usually listen to music. I listen to sports talk radio. And there was a popular sports guy a couple of years ago who went on this rant who was attacking Star Wars fans. Went on and on about how they're just a bunch of grown babies yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And you know what? I never listened to that guy again because he truly overtly attacked Star Wars right. fans. So now my right. blood's getting up. I'm hearing about this Fox scene. I'm ready. To, tomorrow I'm going to tear this woman apart. I'm going to tear this Fox thing apart. So I find the link and I start watching it. Okay. And it gets about two minutes in. I'm like, oh, all right, all right. And then gets to the end of the video. I'm like, I must have the wrong video because there was absolutely nothing even resembling offensive in the video to the point that I actually thought I've got to have the wrong one. I started looking through all the tweets again to see if there was another video clip that everybody's actually really angry about. And behold, 
There was none. They were people who didn't like and don't get and don't understand Star Wars. And guess what? They spoke as people who didn't like, didn't get, and don't understand Star Wars. I found the tone of the conversation. Look, were they acting kind of douchey? Sure, yes, they were acting kind of douchey. But you know it was offensive? It, it was, it was, it was, no, no. no. I, excuse me, no. It wasn't offensive. It was arrogant. And my thing was, it's not... It's, so what? But it, Because the thing is... That you, so what? You don't bring in one guy. You don't bring in one guy who's just sitting there. And then what they Dude. do, what they do is the two of them sat together, and they just pinpoint, and they asked him a question, and then they jumped on and him. And this is say, different from how Fox does what? It's not. But it's exactly... That doesn't make it right. Here's, no, it doesn't make it right. But it was. But in seeing how Fox does this all the time, it was by far the most benign, neutral, least offensive thing I have ever seen them do on Fox, and I've seen yeah. them do a lot of it badly on Fox. That's the basis of it. This crybaby mentality of "you don't like the same thing I like, ban him" is pathetic. It's pathetic. And look, I gotta say this. I put this post up on Twitter, and I, I stand by this. When did the Star Wars fan community become such a bunch of weak, fragile, whiny little babies? So, so what? There's some guy on TV who doesn't like Star Wars, spoke a little bit disparagingly about it, came across but as no, but bit, they but didn't, but came across as rude uh -huh. to the person they were talking to. But this whole fiction that I saw on Twitter first about how they were destroying and coming after and attacking Star Wars fans. And the other thing I put in my tweet was, look, the only way they were attacking or said anything offensive is if you go into that video wanting to be offensive. Because look, I was ready to come out here and yeah. rip them apart. I, yeah. You are disrespecting me! But I gotta tell you, if even for a frame, if Luke comes on screen, I may effing piss myself. <laughs> I may, you may literally see my jeans go dark. I'm gonna tell you this, <laughs> if I only pee myself seeing Luke Skywalker, that's a win for everybody involved. <laughs> Somebody change, Ellis. <laughs> I'm, I am excited, maybe not as excited as these uh, young men with me. You're talking about how do you top the final shot of the trailer over Chewie, we're home. How do you top it? Kylo Ren standing over some vanquished foe with his lightsaber out, and then you just go close up from behind him over his shoulder, and you see him turn his head, and behind him is Luke <laughs> effing Skywalker, right. who pulls out his lightsaber. <laughs> yeah! I will lose my mind! Uh, man, man child, my mind. I'm, I'm calling the man child alert Can you center. Imagine that, though? These are the guys who are about to have a heart attack over here. Oh my, I think I'm going to cry thinking about it. Can you imagine that? He's shot? about to cry Can about something that's not Luke happening. Skywalker with a lightsaber? And then right that's... as he does it, you hear the Monday Night Football music. <laughs> <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Uh, kill me now. <laughs> you are disrespecting me!